Hi everyone. Um, I'm here today to show you how to do a simple digit digitization of a picture of an image. We're going to be using this project menu create from image option, which is going to allow us to load uh, a photograph or uh, like a JPG file or a PNG file or something like that from your computer um, into the program and we're going to digitize it and match it up with a particular palette and uh, create a digitized grid of that photograph. Okay, um, I'm going to focus mostly today on um, doing this for cross stitching and doing it for uh, latch hook rug making. I'm going to make a, um, I'm going to do two, two examples. Uh, the first picture is going to be um, some really colorful apples in the fall um, with some yellow leaves and things like that. I'm going to see if we can make that into a latch hook rug pattern. Um, and the other thing I'm going to do is pull up a photo of uh, my cat and uh, see what we can do with that um, in terms of making a cross stitch pattern out of it. Okay, now this is going to be pretty much just the basic simple basic digitization and I'm going to focus on one particular value um, which I'm going to call I'm going to call it the re remove number the number of cells that you can remove out of the uh, picture um, and we're going to be modifying that value uh, all along in this one and seeing how that affects the picture that as it gets digitized um, and then we're going to use two palettes the first is latch hook uh, yarn and the second one is going to be uh, the DMC floss. Okay, so um, create from image. We're going to pick that first. I had a previous image in here that I was working with. So let's go in and pick um, my apple picture, which is this one. Okay, so here is my image. I'm going to use the entire image, so I'm not going to do any cropping or anything. If your picture loads in here sideways, just click the the uh, the uh, rotate buttons till you get what you the orientation that you want. That can happen depending upon how the photo was taken and that kind of thing. So you might end up with something that's that's set sideways when it loads. Um, so you just go ahead and fix that. I'll do the cropping on the next picture because this one I want the entire picture. Um, I really like all the colors in here uh, against the blue sky. I think it's really, really pretty picture. And um, there's a lot of detail in this picture. And so when we do this, we're really going to have to make a larger grid than what's right here. We've got 100 um, cells set. And when you're digitizing a photo, you always want to find, you always want to have this define max dimension selected. This define grid is for a very specific examples of loading in um, maybe a grid from a piece of paper that you have, uh, a picture that you have of another thing that is actually a grid, you know, and you want one, p one dot per each. Uh, grid cell. So it's like this is a way of importing uh, other patterns um, that could, might come from other uh, other tools or th things like that. So I'll show that in another uh, video. Also, next week I'm going to make a, a second video on digitization. And I'm going to show you some more advanced techniques uh, where you can change palette colors and um, and do some and do some color substitution and things like that, but this is just going to be the very basic, simple. How would you you know digitize an image in the simplest way? So that's what this one is. Next week we'll do a more advanced version of this with some different pictures. Okay, so we pick always pick this when you're doing digitizing a picture. So define max dimension, and what this is is this this tells us. How, what the max number of cells you want to use to break up the picture. And this is, the, since it's the maximums, it's, it's generally the uh, width in the, in the largest direction. So in this picture, uh, what this is doing is it's defining the number of cells that are going to be used vertically in the picture. 
Okay. Now, if your cells are not square and you're using, you know, you've set up your, your grid for knitting or something like that, or some other thing where your cells are squashed or something like that, this could be end up being the cells in a different dimension than what you might think, depend upon, you know, which way the, the cells are defined. But when it's a square, uh, when the, when the uh, grid cells are square, like for cross stitch or latch hooking, then um, this is always going to be the number of cells in whatever looks like to you the longest dimension. So this is number of cells uh, from top to bottom or bottom to top. And because I have so much, yeah, well, let's, let's go ahead, let's leave it at 100 for now. And if, it, and if you can't get it exactly on 100, this number is editable. So you can just type in what you want. Uh, the maximum you can go to is 300. Um, and then since we're doing a latch hook, I'm going to use uh, Hirschner's latch hook rug yarn. That's pre-cut um, rug yarn. And it takes just a second for it to load that. And then it will load the colors in here so you can see what they look like um, while you're doing the digitization. Now I'm going to call this the remove, well, maybe I'll call it the remove colors value. Remove colors value. That makes sense. Um, and I'm going to talk about that more in just a minute. Right now, the default is set to five, which is really pretty small, particularly for a picture that's this size. Uh, and I will talk about that in a minute when I show you how the result of, of this picture. So we press create project and then it digitizes the project. Now, we probably want to turn off the grid when you're doing this. So I'm going to say hide grid says because that puts all the lines on there and you can tell that we're not getting enough detail in here this was set to 100 cells from the bottom to the top now one thing you could do is you could crop your picture to a certain section if you don't want to get make more cells because it's going to make your project bigger um, this is going to be done with latch hook yarn on a uh, on, on a five mesh canvas which is five cells per inch. So it's gonna be fairly good sized. I kind of have already decided that I'm gonna make a good sized rug out of this. Um, but, and I want the whole picture. This is not enough detail at 100 cells from top to bottom. So let's go back in here. Well, this is not saved, but I don't wanna save it because it's not something that I want. Um, so let's go in here and let's let's crank up the value here. Let's go all the way up to 300 and see what kind of detail we get in our picture. So let's say create project. Now it's processing the image. The larger it is, it takes a little bit longer. And now we've got something that, you know, at, when it's zoomed out to a small uh, picture like that, almost looks like the photograph. And uh, And I'm... I really like that. So let's zoom in just a little bit. Um, but yeah, that's looking pretty good. I like that. Okay, now let's just look a little bit more at our project. So it's, we're, we're going to end up with the 300 cells over here. And I want to <clears throat> make sure that, oops, wrong one. I'm going to pick cell size. So I want to pick the latch hook canvas five mesh because I want my I want it to be able to compute the uh, the number of cells that it's going to be. Let's make that small again. Okay. So when I go into here now after I've set that, I can go into project info, and now it will tell me I've got I've got 300 rows by 225 columns. It's not saved yet, so that I have no project name. Um, and it's the finished size of it. Once I've set the size of the cells, then it can compute the finished size of the project, which is going to be 45 by 60 inches, which is large. But I think that'll be I think that'll be good. I think that'll be okay. So um, that's a square grid. That's the cell size that we just set. And then um, we don't need gauge info for this. This help tells me what the palette is that I'm using. And this is the number of colors that are used. Then I get a list down below here that tells me that um, the, the list of all the different colors 
in the palette that are currently used. And it tells me the number of cells that it's used in. So this color coffee is used in 2038 cells. Okay, so it's, that's, that's squares, or you'd need 2,038 little pieces of latch hook yarn to put, the, to put those in. This one is 1940. These, um, these colors are arranged in order from most used to least used. So this is the most used color in 2,000 cells. And then if we scroll all the way down here, we find colors that are used in seven cells. There's one used in seven cells. There's one used in nine cells, 15, 17, et cetera. And so they're being used here in, um, <clears throat> in more and more cells as we go up. But the, I'm gonna purchase um, these, uh, the, the yarn in, in pre-cut packages. And I think there are 320 in the Hirschner's pre-cut yarn bags for each color. So I would hate to purchase a bag of, you know, 320 of these and then only use seven of them. So, um, so I'm not gonna, I don't think I wanna do that. I think I wanna get rid of these is what I wanna do. And this is where we come to that remove color value, which is at the bottom of this, this, um, uh, create from image. Okay, so I, oh, maybe I do want to save that. Let's just save that real quick. Apple, and this is where the color value is set to five. And so I'm going to put that number in the name because I'm going to make several ones with several different values and see what I think of them. So I'm calling that Apple five. Okay, now let's go to create from image. Okay. Now, we're going to focus on this number down here, this remove color value. Okay, right now it's five. And we had some, some uh, in our list of colors, we had some colors that were only used in seven cells or 20 cells. And most likely those colors can be replaced by other colors. And so we can have a we can have a, a, a more economical use of our colors if we raise this value. So let's say we raise this value to 50. And let's see what that does. So we create the project. Okay, it's processing the image. There it is. And honestly, looks just about the same to me. I don't know that I could really tell the difference between that one and the other one. And, uh, and if we go in here and we look at our project info, now there are, uh, instead of 79 colors, there are 71 colors used. And if we go down here at the bottom, we have this dark pink, which is used in 53 cells. And that's the, that's the least used color. And the reason it's there is because we set our threshold our remove color value to be 50 cells. So anything below 50 cells that was used in the picture has now been substituted with colors that are more in use. So those least used colors are now gone. But let's go ahead and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to make several different pictures with my color, remove color value set higher and higher until I am, am happy with the picture and the, um, the I still want to be happy with the quality of the picture as I'm removing colors, but I want to be more economical in the sense that I don't want to necessarily use small amounts of yarn when I'm paying for more. So I'm going to Let's close this. And then I'm going to change this. Let's go ahead and change the, um, the value to 100. This time I'm not going to save that, that 50 one. And let's change it to 100. OK, great project. All right, there's another picture. Honestly, doesn't look too bad to me. 
it's not not really that bad um, and now we find that when we go into here and we look at our project info then now we only have 60 colors that are in use so we were 79 then we were 71 and now we're only 60 and the least used one is now used in 109 cells okay and if we go and keep going we could just increment to say 200 great project well, let's see what happens still not too bad a, not too bad a picture um, but let's go and let's go and jump up to something like 500 okay all right let's uh, increase this a little bit okay so now i've i've removed quite a few colors let's look at the um the project info so now we're down to 28 colors so i removed all colors that were used in 500 cells or less so all those colors have been removed and substituted by other colors so the next the, the least used color is now in 705 cells okay and we're down to colors of only 28 but you'll notice that you're getting some issues here so if you look at this apple you'll notice that the um let me just make it a little bigger maybe a couple of times okay and you notice that the apple the colors on the apple are actually starting to fade a bit and we've got this band of green now going across here because uh you know it's eliminating all of the uh, the reddish colors at this point and you're and you're getting some color substitution that maybe you don't want so the way i did this is i um i made pictures of each and every one of these i went i went and made my remove color value 100 200 300 400 and 500 and then i did a screenshot i'm on a windows machine that's like alt print screen is what does a screenshot and then you can paste it into uh, an image editing program i i use paint a lot windows paint because that's uh it, it comes with the system and it's and it's uh you know easy to use and um other ways you could do that is you could use the project download option which would give you a png picture of what your what your what your uh, result is in each of these cases and um and you can open that in a in a program like paint so so basically what i've got in paint here is i've got five pictures now that i can look at because i want to determine which one of the digitizations i want to use i want the color quality to be reasonable but i want to also use fewer colors so i have less waste and i have a you know a, an easier to deal with project so if i open these pictures this was with the remove color value of five. That was a pretty good, pretty good picture. This one is a hundred. Really not a lot of difference between the two of those. So, you know, a hundred is definitely a pretty good picture. And then uh, here's 200. Okay, and that is not too bad. I, I, I did a lot of looking at like this particular apple in here, over here, and you can see changes going on there. We did lose a little bit of the reddishness here. We've got some kind of some tans coming in and that kind of thing. Um, and then let's pick up 300. Here's 300. And again, if we look at that apple we've lost a little bit of the pinkishness here and we've got a little bit of uh you know uh more of a beige color coming in there that's not actually too bad though um when i get down to this 300 i'm down to 42 colors and i kind of like the remove 300 because the packages contain uh from that i'm going to purchase i have 320 in them so if i remove anything that uses 300 colors or less then i remove a little bit of waste there and then we've got a 400 which i'll bring over here 
okay. And now if you look at this apple again, you can tell the beige is kind of coming in more. And then when you get to the 500 one, you've really got green coming in here. And it's, it's you know, it doesn't have enough colors to really uh, put the detail in that needs to be there. So uh, my decision was to go with the uh, remove 300 um, uh, digitization uh, because um, that number 300, like I described, was is sounds good to me, and I'm not really losing that much of the color. If we compare that to the to this one over here, we do lose some of the pink in here and that kind of thing. But overall, I think the picture looks okay. If I don't, if I stand back and look at it and don't uh, think too much about the detail, um, it, it's looking all right to me. So 300 is the one that I uh, decided upon, and that's the one that I'll be, uh, be using. Um, okay, so let's go in, and I don't have that one on this particular machine, but let me um, recreate it here just by putting in the 300 here. Okay, so there's my there's my project 300, and we can see you know it did lose a little bit of the pink in there, but if we go to uh, project info, then we've got 42 colors that we're using, and the least of which is 314 cells. Of course, you have to get two packages of this color, and then you'll have there's, there's never there's never an end to the leftovers <laughs> in terms of yarn. But uh, yeah, so this this is this is where I decided to go. Okay, then um, as I mentioned, if you if you haven't watched the uh, printing and and uh, download uh, video, you should watch that because I have an example of this particular apple picture um, where I have assigned symbols to, in order to print the print it out, and uh, and at the end of that video. Is a uh, is a printout on 18 by 24 paper that I did through Staples, which shows this this uh, design and how it came out in printing. But if you haven't seen that, I'll just briefly mention to you that um, there are some print options in here. We pick display menu, uh, more options, and then um, in here you can select some different things in terms of printing. Uh, you can say print symbols over colors. This selection will auto-generate symbols and there will be a symbol printed on every single color uh, in here. Um, if you pick this one, then you can select uh, specific specific uh, symbols and assign them to here. And, and again, go watch the printing video and I'll show you how to do that. It's basically just a matter of clicking on both of these and clicking assign uh, to assign a value. And then you would say save when you've got that set up the way you want it. And then you can use the print or the download option. The print option will break it up into pages. And this is a very large grid. So those pages are gonna be many. Or you can do a download, which will download the entire image, uh, which is what I ended up doing. Download this entire image to a PNG file. I then uploaded that into Staples. Uh, Staples has a web uh, UI and ordered a uh, 18 by 24 print of that. And, uh, and like I said, that's in the other, the other video. Look for my printing and download uh, video um, at my um, uh, YouTube channel. Okay, all right, so that's, that's what I did there. Now, let's go and um, let's, let me just save this. So apples 300. Okay, have it saved in another place, but um, okay. Let's go now and we'll try another image. Okay, in this case, I'm gonna get a picture here of my cat, um, former cat. She passed away a few years ago. Her name was Susie and she's laying in the sun here on the piano bench. And I have really liked that, the, the contrast between the light and the dark and in this picture. 
And in this case, I'll show you how to do crop. So we're just going to drag a, a box around Susie here. And we can do this either by, you know, putting the mouse down and dragging it, or you can actually just click on one corner and then click on the other corner. Um, that works better on the iPhone and the iPad than dragging it. Okay, and then we're going to say crop. So when we say crop, then the section inside of that rectangle that we've drawn will become the whole picture. So now we've kind of like zoomed in, right? Because now we've got just that cropped area. Okay, um, so let's see. Let's start with 100 again. This is uh, it says define max dimension. Make sure that one is selected. I'm going to pick the number of cells 100. And in this case, that will be vert. That'll be horizontally. So that'll go from left to right. That'll be 100 cells because that's the widest part of the picture. And now I'm thinking about maybe doing some cross stitching. So um, maybe a cross stitch example. So I'm going to pick the um, DMC embroidery floss. It takes it a minute, just or well, not a minute, but a few seconds to load, particularly if this palette is really large. And this is this uh, DMC embroidery floss has over five, has 500 and something um, colors in it. So it takes a little bit while a while to op load this panel. So um, so that comes up there. And let's go back down to five again, just to start from the very beginning. So, um, and then we'll say create project. Okay, there is my kitty cat. And again, at a hundred, it's not really quite enough. There's too much detail in the cat. I mean, I can see the, I can see the piano bench and, you know, that darkness and that kind of thing, but there's still not enough detail to really get the cat. So let's go back. Okay, you don't want to save that. And let's increase this to say 200. Okay, 200 like that. All right. And like I said before, you can always edit this value. If you click on it over here, you can edit it. Also, when you've got a large palette in here, every time you open this up, it will reload this little thing. So that's why it, there was a little glitch at the beginning when it kind of jumped. Um, so that's it's it's reloading that uh, that palette every time it opens the window in case you've made any changes to the palette, which will be in my advanced tutorial next week. Okay, so um, let's do that. Let's make it 200 and let's say create project. Okay. All right. Oh, there we go. That looks kind of neat. Um, yeah, and at that, you know, zoomed out place like that, it looks pretty neat. This is like the bottom of the edge of the front of the piano. I don't know if I really want that to be in the picture or not, but I can always remove um, rows from the finished grid once I get it, uh, gets it, get it digitized. Okay, now let's do just like we did with the other project. We'll go into project info and let's take a look at the color usage, right? So up at the top here, we've got 14,000 cells of very dark navy blue. That's probably the, the most of the background and some black mixed in there at 1,402 cells. We could probably substitute some of that away if we wanted to, or if we could just, we could make the background black and that I could do next week. Um, and then we come all the way down here again and we have these little bits of things. We've got pink in here and sky blue, which seems odd for the color, but um, if for this particular picture, so let's just kind of take a look. We've got a lot that are used in just little bits and pieces. And since we have such a large palette of 500 colors, we've got 177 colors that are currently being used. So, and you can tell that a lot of them are just used in 10 or so cells. And I suspect that those can be substituted away just by increasing our remove uh, color value. Okay, I'm just kind of taking a look through here to see what we've got. Um, 
Let's just do what we did with the last one and let's a lot of 30s and 40s. Let's go and just try out the uh, 50 value again. Again, it reloads that palette just for just in case you because you can't actually edit the palette in between and that would change what was in it. So it has to reload that. Um, so let's set this to 50 and let's see what we come up with with that. More colors, the longer it takes. Oh, OK, I don't see that much of a difference. Actually, I think it might look just slightly better. Uh, a few of those little pinks and weird things that are that were in there are probably not there. And so it's uh, maybe looking a little bit better, actually. Um, <clears throat> Okay, let's see, um, I want to go to project info again, and we can see that, you know, we cut our cutoff value at 50, so we removed any, any colors that were used in 50 cells or less, and then we've got these other, these other colors in here starting at 55. And these colors look a little bit more like things that should be in, in here. Now we're down from 177 colors to 84. So we're getting down a little bit lower. Okay. And now I kind of I kind of like that one, so I'm just going to um, save that and we'll call it Suzy 50 because that's where I set my uh, remove color value. And now let's just try it again. Again, it's, it's, it's reloading the, the, it's dutifully reloading the palette there for a second. So let's try 100, let's try 100. Let's go to 100 again. <clears throat> there it is. All right, it's looking a little grayer, I notice, which, could be good or bad. I mean, it it could be uh, could be kind of nice to have some of those extra colors removed, and it becomes more kind of like a black and white uh, picture. Which and let's go in here and look. What have we got now? We've got we're down to 42 colors, which is which is nice. Uh, the least of which is 125. Uh, cells, 125 stitches in this case, because it would be a, um, um, a, a, a cross stitch. Okay, let me go in and pick this. Um, <clears throat> let's go and save this. Suzy 100. Okay. And I also want to know what size this is going to end up being. Let me set, change my cell size. I had a latch hook rug in here. Let's do a 14 count uh, Ada cross stitch and see what the size of the picture is in that case. Make that a little smaller. Um, and let me just check this project info here. It's about 14 by 10, about 14 by 11. Probably once I trim it a little bit, I can make it 11, 14 by 11, something like that. Okay, so that's um, <clears throat> Susie, uh, Susie 100. And let's go and just do this one more time. Okay, so I'll do Susie, let's jump up to 300 and see how that looks. Processing the image. Okay. All right. Look at that. Now we've got, now we're getting really very uh, kind of a, a black and white thing. We've got what, what left? Oh, we've got only 10 colors used at this point. So it's really a pared down list. And depending upon what you like, you know, you can get a lot of variation in the picture by changing that one number. 
you know, so in terms of creating, uh, you know, simple, simple um, uh, digitized images, digitized grids from your photographs. I mean, it's it's there's really kind of like two things to pay attention to, and one is the thing we decided at the very beginning. Uh, which is this max number of cells slider that will give you more detail. And, you know, if your picture has detail in it, like, you know, little cat whiskers and things like that, that you want to show up in the actual final picture, then you can't get away from, you know, you can't get, you can't get a detailed picture, you know, if you haven't got enough cells to, to, uh, uh, to add that detail. So that that's the one that's one thing that's very important. So you get that number high enough to the point where you are comfortable with the with the uh, with the detail in the picture, and then at take the use this number to take get rid of those uh, colors at the end, the ones that are used in just a few cells, um, and you can use it to modify the picture as you keep going up. Um, it will take more and more um, un less used colors out of the picture and trying to substitute colors that are more used. And so you end up, you can end up going all the way up and until you get maybe two colors and you've got, you know, kind of a black and white picture at that point or, or a more artistically looking uh, picture. So, um, that's the end of this. That's going to be the end of this demo. So this is the this is the simple way to digitize um, uh, photos, in, and I did it in square grids here: one for cross stitch and one for um, latch hook. Um, next week, I'm going to do uh, another demo where we're going to do some more advanced techniques. Um, where we're going to do color substitution in the in the um, in the project after after it's been digitized uh, to remove colors that maybe you don't want in there and things like that. It all depends upon the photograph and how you want it processed. And we're also going to make some uh, changes to the actual palette where we hide some colors and uh, see how that affects the digitiz digitization of the of the of the image. So uh, that'll be next week. So be sure and watch for that. And um, I would love it if you could uh, if uh, go in if you like what you're seeing here and you want to to know more about the grid designer. If you can click the subscribe button, uh, which should be on the lower right corner of this um, video, um, that would be really really great. That would be very helpful for me. Um, thanks very much. Bye-bye.